Cheers everyone. I'm Kevin, an engineer by trade, who's been at it for a good part of 20 years. I want to share my experience of moving to the Philippines. Not too long ago, I decided to shake things up a bit. I traded the familiar Aussie coast for the lively, bustling islands of the Philippines. At 47, I've seen my fair share of ups and downs, but moving here was a whole new ball game. My company threw me this curveball of a project, a big deal that meant I'd be calling the Philippines home for a few years. The moment I stepped off the plane, the Philippines greeted me with open arms. Everywhere I looked, there were Manila street markets buzzing with life, streets painted in the most vibrant hues you could imagine, and so many beautiful Filipina women. It was overwhelming, but man, was it exciting. First order of business was finding an apartment, a spot that wasn't just a crash pad but a window into this new world I was eager to be a part of. I ended up in a lively neighborhood in Manila, not too far from Makati. My apartment was nothing fancy, but it had this balcony that gave me a front row seat to the city's heartbeat. Getting settled, I dove headfirst into everything Manila had to offer. I hit the dance clubs in Makati, and let me tell you, they know how to party here. I even spent a couple of days in Angeles City visiting all the clubs and checking out the bar girls. I got a few massages in Angeles City and they were absolutely mind-blowing. But as much as I wanted to keep riding that wave, reality was about to set in. My work was knocking on my door. Living alone in a new country, you bump into challenges you never thought you'd face. I've been flying solo for a couple of years now, since the divorce, and back home, the idea of needing a maid never crossed my mind. But here, things were different. The pace, the workload, trying to juggle everything, I realized I could use an extra pair of hands. And hiring a live-in maid? Surprisingly affordable. So, I placed an advert on Craigslist. That's where Trisha came in. She was a 24-year-old from Tondo, Manila. She answered my advert with such straightforwardness, her professionalism shining through and a kind of warmth that you just can't fake. I decided to meet her, see if she was the real deal. Invited her over to the apartment for a chat, a sort of informal interview, if you will. The day Trisha walked into my apartment, I'll admit, I was caught off guard. It wasn't just her looks. Though she was stunning, it was the way she carried herself, with a kind of grace and confidence that you don't see every day. And her smile, it just lit up the whole place, brought in a warmth I didn't even know was missing. As we talked, her sharing about her life, her family back in Cebu, and her dreams, it was her sincerity that really got to me. It was clear she wasn't just looking for a job, she wanted to make a difference, to grow and to learn. Hiring her was a no-brainer for me. There was something about her, a connection that I felt right from the start, something I hadn't expected. Trisha needed a place to stay, part of the job deal, so she moved into the spare room. It's a pretty common setup here in the Philippines, and it seemed like the perfect solution for both of us. In the weeks after she moved in, I found myself on an emotional roller coaster. There was this ease between us, a camaraderie that quickly deepened into something more. I've always been the logical type, pride myself on my discipline, but with Trisha, all that seemed to wobble. I was drawn to her, more than I should have been, considering I was her employer. But I kept a lid on those feelings, kept things professional. Our relationship, if you can call it that, evolved in the most natural way. The apartment wasn't just a place to crash anymore, it became a home filled with laughter, warmth, and the kind of lively conversations I'd come to look forward to at the end of each day. When I came home, the place looked fantastic and Trisha had dinner ready. It was a dream come true. But I was wrestling with my feelings, fully aware of all the reasons why acting on them was a bad idea. The employer-employee thing, the age gap, not to mention the cultural and personal lines we'd be crossing. Yet, no matter how much I tried to keep those feelings in check, they kept growing, silently and persistently. Then came that evening in the kitchen, which felt like any other at first. We were cooking, laughing, the room filled with our banter. But suddenly, everything shifted. There was this charged silence, a tension thick with all the things we hadn't said out loud. And when Trisha looked up at me, her eyes full of affection, I felt it, she wanted me, and I wanted her. That moment felt like time itself had paused, and my resolve just vanished. Trisha stepped closer, wrapping her arms around me, and then, she kissed me. It was like all the feelings I'd been trying to hold back just poured out. That kiss wasn't just a kiss, it was an admission of everything we'd been feeling, a leap over the hurdles we'd placed between us. And then, she led me to the bedroom, marking the start of many nights we'd spend together, intertwined in every sense. Over the next month, Trisha and I grew very close. It felt like we'd found pieces of ourselves in each other, creating this hole that neither of us had known was missing. But life has a way of testing you, of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. One quiet evening, shattered by the ring of Trisha's phone, we faced our first real challenge. 
it was her sister from Cebu, calling with the news that their mum had been rushed to the hospital with a heart attack. Watching Trisha's face fall, seeing her break down, it tore through me. She needed to be with her mum, said she had to leave in two days. Coming home the next day to find Trisha in tears was a punch to the gut. She was worried sick about her mum's medical bills, about how her family was going to manage. When she told me it was a thousand dollars just to start the care her mum needed, I didn't even have to think about it. Family's everything, and in that moment, Trisha's family was mine too. I took the day off, went to the bank, and got the money together. It was the least I could do, not just to help her mum get the care she needed but to show Trisha that I was all in, for better or worse. That evening, Trisha got a grab taxi for the airport. That goodbye kiss and her words of love and gratitude, it just confirmed everything I felt for her. This was real, and no matter what came our way, we'd face it together. The next day rolled around, business as usual, or as close to it as I could get. Work was my only distraction from the quiet of my now empty apartment and the constant worry for Trisha and her family back in Cebu. When work wrapped up, I was more than ready to head back, try to unwind, maybe distract myself a bit more. But nothing, absolutely nothing, could have prepared me for what I found when I got home. The moment I unlocked my apartment door, it felt like the ground just gave way beneath me. My place was stripped bare of furniture, decorations, all those little things that made it feel like home, gone. My personal stuff too, including my bank cards, vanished. Panic-stricken, I bolted to my neighbors, asking if they'd seen anything. The answer floored me. Trisha, alongside two guys, had cleared out my apartment. The realization hit me like a freight train. The woman I'd fallen for, trusted with everything, had scammed me. The entire relationship, every moment we shared, was a lie. How could I have been so naive? How did I not see through her? I tried calling her, only to find her number disconnected. She was gone, without a trace. I reported everything to the police, but even then, it hit me, I never really knew her. She gave me a fake name. I never looked at her passport. I'd been so caught up in the moment, so enchanted, that I skipped the basic due diligence. Now, still in Manila, I'm picking up the pieces, trying to move on, but the betrayal left a deep scar. I've met other Filipina ladies since then, cautiously stepping back into the dating scene, but I'm holding back, unsure about diving into anything serious again. I'm drawn to Filipina women, their warmth, their spirit, and I can see a future here, maybe even marriage. I know there is a good woman out there. I love the life here. I have a friend who will retire in the Philippines soon so I'll have a good mate to party with. The cost of living in the Philippines is fantastic. But this experience taught me a harsh lesson in judgment, in not letting myself be completely swept away by charm and beauty. I'm sharing my story as a caution to others. If you're ever in a situation like mine, think twice. A live-in maid might seem like a simple solution, but if there's any personal attraction, it's a path fraught with potential pitfalls. Learn from my mistake. Keep things professional, and always, always verify who you're letting into your life. I wish you all the best in your journey for finding a lovely Filipina wife or girlfriend. I'd like to thank the Global Travel Network for letting me share my story. Cheers to all of you, and stay safe.